Hi everybody, we're here at Camp Springs in Bluegrass Park and I just want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to show you and then take you around and show you some of the park. First of all, how's the weather, Ellen? It's perfect. Uh, apparently because of Hurricane Ida, it's about 15 degrees cooler than normal. There's no humidity and it's a glorious day. It got so cold the other night that Ellen had to find a blanket because just sitting out here, that's amazing because it doesn't usually get that way out here. But uh, you know, when we first started thinking about making this special anniversary edition, uh, I was thought what a great idea it would be if we could bring the film back to Bluegrass Park and show it right here. Well, I got in touch with Fred Bartenstein and Fred said, well, that's not gonna work out too well because the park has gotten into the thorough disrepair the nature has taken over and the trees have overgrown and the place, the stage has fallen apart. So we decided that uh, maybe that wasn't going to be one of the things we could do. But then we found out that the park was for sale. And the next thing we found out was that uh, even though it was a mess, and, and we saw it with pictures, Akira sent us those pictures, mm -hmm. right? With the Bluegrass 45. It looked like Sleeping Beauty's castle, the stage. They had come out here from Raleigh when they were here for the uh, International Bluegrass Music Association and they took a look around and the photos were absolutely dismal. But then when it was sold, it was sold to Cody Johnson and Cody and his wife Donna decided they were going to bring it back and have bluegrass festivals here again. And the work that they have done on, this, on these grounds is just incredible. So, Cody, how do you feel this uh, festival's going so oh, far? It's been great. We've had the biggest crowd so far. Been running this our third year, and it's, uh, it's pretty special. A lot of people here. And I got to say, the Bluegrass Park is back, and it's better than ever. <laughs> so, uh, and the other night, uh, Cody showed the Bluegrass Country Soul film, and we've had nothing but incredible compliments from people. Yes. It really looked great on that screen. It was pretty Cody. special. Yes. And where'd you get that screen? It's a billboard, an interstate billboard. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. It's, uh, it's pretty big. It's bigger than I need, but it worked out really good. How big is it? 14 by 48. So, so you only need about 30 feet of that. That's about right? it. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. Well, now we'll, we'll have to do another film in ultra wide screen. There, there we go. <laughs> And when the film was shown on Friday night, uh, it was, what do you think, Alan? What would you call it? was it? spectacular. We didn't know. We heard Cody had bought a screen. We heard Cody had bought a projector and that it all looked great and sounded great. And we took him at his word. And it was, I think, better than we could have expected. I mean, it was so nice. And the sound is so good. And the picture is so sharp. Kudos to Henniger Media Services again for the job they did restoring this old movie because it was taken from one of the original prints and what they were able to do with it is just nothing short of miraculous. It was, it was incredible and the, the <clears throat> sound system that Ellen's talking about, they have its subwoofers under the stage which when it was turned up full volume and that thunderstorm hit, uh, it, shook the <laughs> it shook the ground. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, and uh, I think that's uh, it really was it was almost like seeing the those performers again in holograms because it was up on the same stage where we had shot it uh, and I don't know that anybody's ever seen anything like that it, but for me it was absolutely magical and uh, so I have to hand it again to Cody Johnson for putting all this together 
You know, it was really great to have a chance to speak with the returning musicians from that legendary festival, uh, including Gary Wilson. And Gary and his brother Greg had performed at just about all of Carl Mahaney's festivals back in the 70s and uh, late 60s even. And uh, he was there with his band. And also Doyle Lawson came back and he had been to uh, all three of Cody's festivals up to now and has Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver and uh, it was great to see him again. And then there was someone who was not a performer back in 1971 but was seen in the film carrying a, <laughs> a pink umbrella and that was Missy Rains. Now Missy Rains has become one of our foremost musicians and singer-songwriters and a multi-award winning bassist at the IBMA Awards. Anyway, she was, um, she was president of the Country Gentleman Fan Club and um, she was my, my, my uncle's wife, you know, she was my, my mom's uh, sister-in-law and uh, yeah, and so I remember being at, when, watch, standing there amongst the crowd watching them warm up with Matterhorn and seeing all the cameras and just being like this little kid just wandering around <laughs> and watching them, you know, sort of being part of the train as they came down. Yeah. But I didn't make it Dole said, uh, on camera. <laughs> Dole it. said that when he, it was last night when I called, he, was, he had been with the, the Cuts Gentleman for a week that, when they made the movie. That was the, he was, he'd been there. That was his first festival with them. That was, wow, I didn't realize it was pretty special. We also met Jeremy Stevens, who's a professional photographer, and while we didn't get any pictures of Bobby Osborne, he was able to snap a couple, and he's allowing us to use them in our uh, marketing efforts for the Bluegrass Country Soul. And here is the one and only Bobby Osborne in the uh, VIP tent after the show. Jeremy also got a snap of Ellen and I applauding one of the many acts, uh, and uh, it looks like he shot this at night. Uh, also, uh, a number of people came up and asked us to sign the book, The Legendary Festival, and we were very happy to do so here. At, uh, he's trying to sign, sign it in the dark. And here are just a few snapshots around the festival to show you what was going on. One of the things I was most amazed at was the number of golf carts that proliferated all around the festival grounds. That certainly was not there in 1971. The stage, though, is looking better than ever, and here's a front shot, here's a side shot for those of you who are interested in the technical aspects of that festival. And here are just a few snaps around the festival grounds.
family movie. And uh, but I uh, I spent close to eight years with the gentleman, and uh, uh, Johnny Waller was certainly one of the premier vocalists of all times, in my opinion. And uh, we lost a good one. But I remember also that uh, uh, Johnny was notorious for forgetting words. And it got to where that once I was there for a while, I think probably without a doubt, I was probably Bluegrass Music's first ventriloquist. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew when Johnny was going to miss the words, and I would <laughs> feed him the words. And one night somewhere that we were doing a song, and he didn't, he had not only forgot where I knew he would, he forgot the whole verse. So I was sitting trying to feed him the words, and the last line I said, I wish I had a hamburger. He sang, I wish I had a hamburger. <laughs> he said, wait, that's not the words to that song. I said, well, how do you know? <laughs> God, uh, great guy. He and Bill Yates, we sadly lost Bill Emerson a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the finest banjo players uh, in this business ever. I can't forget you. I'm not holding on for a love that's really given. It's never really gone. I was swept away. the full story behind that legendary 1971 festival, the bluegrass artists who performed there, and the movie that was made there, visit bluegrasscountrysoul.com.